Hey guys, so you just saw the uh, 24 valve that was here a minute ago. Uh, really cool flat bitted truck. Uh, pretty bitchin'. Um, anyway, so I'm still working on, you guessed it, wiring for the P48 project. Um, I'm wiring up uh, a couple of the lines that run down near the header. And I thought I would share a tip here for uh, you guys that are doing wiring in that area. What, what I'm doing for all of the wiring that comes in any kind of proximity to the header, uh, I'm shielding it with aluminized tape. Uh, you guys can pick this stuff up at you know any of your hardware stores. Uh, it's used for ducting in the air conditioning system. And uh, I use it as a heat shield and a reflective barrier just to reflect back that any of the radiant heat that's coming off the exhaust just to, as an extra barrier to help protect the wires so I, I'll wrap that in the aluminized tape and then um, put my wire loom over the top of that just to give it some abrasion resistance and, uh, and heat resistance all in one so I'm going to go ahead and loom up this wire here um, and uh, show you guys how I do that Okay guys, so in order to get the uh, get the 350 EFI motor here started up, there's one big step that I've got to do first, and that is pull the transmission. I have to pull the tranny so I can put the flywheel in so that I can uh, have something for the starter to engage so we can spin this thing over and fire it up. I uh, Last time I put the motor in, I anticipated that I would have to put it in, or take it back out, put it in at least one more time so I didn't put the flywheel on I didn't think I was going to need it yet the way things have gone with the wiring everything's gone well um, and I've got everything wired up so uh, at this point I need the flywheel in place so cutting the firewall was something we were going to have to do anyway to uh, clearance for the back of the transmission um, so it's I'm just going to cut it now so I can pull the tranny out I'll lower the whole combination down a little bit, yank the transmission out, bolt the flywheel in place. Uh, the flywheel is going to have to get resurfaced, so it's going to have to go out for machining. Um, and uh, that's kind of why I figured it wasn't critical the last time I had the motor out. But uh, we want to hear this thing fire up. So once it gets fired up, I can drop the transmission again pull the flywheel out, send it out for machining, put a new clutch in here, we've got to do pedals, um, master cylinder for the brakes, clutch master for the uh, clutch slave uh, for the throttle. So, you know, in order to get all that stuff done, we need to fire it up first. So, uh, I'm going to get started on trimming this fire firewall out and try and give myself enough room to get the tranny out without taking too much off the firewall. Um, I don't think it's going to be a problem. So uh, I'll set you guys up in there so you can watch, uh, watch me work the grinder some more.
Okay guys, well, I got the transmission out. I stuck the flywheel in place temporarily. Uh, it's not it's not done. Uh, flywheel's got to come out for resurfacing. So, uh, But we want to start this thing up tomorrow. So in order to do that, we've got to have the flywheel in place uh, for the starter to engage, turn the motor over, and fire it up. So uh, I pulled the tranny out, put the flywheel on, tightened them by hand, uh, just to get them tight and uh, lubed up the pilot bearing because uh, this this motor previously had an automatic transmission behind it, so the pilot uh, was dry. It wasn't wasn't uh, wasn't used. So um, it's all ready to go. I've just got to throw the transmission back in place. But before I do that, I have to do a little bit of grinding, and it's starting to get dark around here, and I don't like to do much grinding after dark. So I'm going to prep out the top of the uh, cross member for a 3 8 plate that needs to be welded on top of there as a spacer. When I was setting the motor height and the transmission height to clear everything, I had to add a 3 8 spacer to the rear transmission mount. It came out acceptable, um, not the prettiest TIG welds ever. Uh, I think I'm adding too much filler. I need to space out my dabs a little bit and uh, get a little bit prettier pattern. But uh, as far as strength goes, it's you could lift the whole truck upside down by this cross member. So uh, I think that's not a problem. So you can see it's a little, little bulky there at the beginning. And it's a little dark here. That's pretty gnarly on that side. But, uh, you know, it'll work. It's probably the strongest spacer ever welded to anything. Didn't even really need to be welded, but I needed the practice. So, uh, earlier I pulled out the transmission, bolted on the flywheel, and uh, now I'm putting the tranny back in place bolting the cross member back in um, so that I can run my fuel lines in the morning, set the timing, and fire this thing up tomorrow. Uh, thanks for watching guys. If you like uh, the video, please click like and subscribe. Um, and uh, I promise when I hit a thousand subscribers, uh, I'm going to buy some better cameras. So please uh, bear with me.